Greetings, mortals. In the lead up to Warcry, the other thing um, I spent some time doing besides painting my Azerite ruins was uh, was discovering a way to create platforms and ladders and walkways um, in, like we saw in the Warcry terrain. Now, the Azerite ruin stuff has a few pieces, uh, especially the Azerite township, has a few pieces that do have a second level, but not a lot. And so um, I was able to create some other kind of second level things um, and uh, some bridges and walkways using a material that you have all around you and uh, and but is you know not something we always look to as a resource and that is the sprues that your models come in now there are a lot of other terrain pieces out there you can get a lot of hobbit or lord of the rings uh terrain sets that have some of those kind of walkways or bridges or like docks etc so you could definitely go that route there's a number of plastic card or MDF um, options out there as well that are fantastic and look great. I wanted to do something that uh, glued the way I, I am used to gluing, using the plastic glue, et cetera, and I could glue to the um, terrain pieces that I had using that same glue, and uh, that's why I went to, to turn to the sprue. And I'm going to show you here step-by-step uh, step how to cut, uh, uh, carve, and glue your pieces uh, so that you can make really cool looking um, walkways and bridges for your Azerite ruins to, to make that ready for war cry or to add to your war cry terrain set to make it more versatile and, uh, and just create more elevation and uh, excitement. So let's go to the hobby table. All right, we're here at my desk. And as I was showing you, um, I've got, and you've got, and we've got all of these sprues after we were done clipping off the things that we need. Um, usually we've taken our bits off and put them into our organizers you know everybody does that right um, and uh, we have a lot of really interesting and cool things that can help us we know we're going to be good for building things we've got a lot of long straights and especially uh, when you've got a kind of a monster you get a lot of really long material and that just gives you the ability to make bigger and longer and crazier things um, but and and when you're building your walkways and stuff, um, you know, these long straights are the ones you need the most of. But sometimes these uh, kind of curves or some uh, stuff like this can create some interesting opportunities to build or to create some other things that are similar or, or interesting. So I'll, I'll, I'll make note of that a little bit, but we'll primarily be focused on this. So obviously uh, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to clip off uh, these pieces and you're going to clip them off in such a way that, you know, you get as much material off as you can. Um, we won't worry about that just yet. But you're going to want to kind of clip real close to the to the sprue. We'll get more off of it a little bit later. Etc. So when I'm done clipping this and these other kind of pieces off the sprue, I will have um, a lot of pieces that look like this. I've got quite a number of uh, lengths of sprue and even uh, kind of, you know, with our, my long ones that are typical width, we've even got some that are a little bit thinner and that can be great for creating some visual interest. Now, um, the thing that I need to do next is take out all of these uh, nubs, kind of these spacers and things that would hold it up and are useful for the molding uh, process, but we're gonna take those off and uh, typically what I will do um, is I will get myself kind of near a, um, oh, I was just real quick. Some of these that have kind of the sprues coming off at angles are great for kind of emulating uh, something like a uh, pine tree, um, a small pine tree with kind of um, uh, branches coming off at different angles. So that can be interesting too if you want some, some scatter logs, etc. cetera. Um, but what I would typically do is to remove these. I'm going to get this as flush as I can. Now, when I clip this, that's going to be uh, popping off all the room. So either wear safety goggles or what I like to do is I like to uh, kind of get these over a trash bin and uh, kind of cover it like this as I'm clipping so that the piece, uh, the projectile <laughs> uh, cuts and clips and shoots into the basket uh, where that goes. So we're going to clip one of these and I'll show you. Um, and so now we're, we've kind of cut it off, uh, right there and it's gotten a little flush. Now I can clip some of these edges as well, kind of these little bumps, but I'll get that with my hobby knife 
in just a moment. So I'm going to do some clipping and I'll show you where we get to. I've got a number of these clipped and you can see that I've made them a bit smoother here, clipped off these nubs. I've cut off a number of, of clipped off more of this, gotten it a little closer. Um, and this is the right spot to get started uh, with the hobby knife. Now, hobby knives are dangerous. And if, uh, if uh, you are underage or young, please get your adult to, uh, parents or adult to help you out with this part. Um, but there's a few things to note in order to keep yourself safe. First and foremost, you want to, wherever you're holding the sprue, um, if I'm going to carve up here, I'm going to hold the sprue down here and I'm going to carve in this direction. So I'm never going to carve with the blade pointing towards me and moving towards me because if I slip, I'm going to cut my hand. So I'm going to carve in this direction because you are going to be applying some pressure and you might get stuck if you cut too deep, etc. And so there could be some pressure uh, when you're pushing. And so then you also don't want to be pointing towards anything of value. You don't want your models here. You don't want anything that you're going to cut and do damage to. So um, to give you an idea then of what I want to do is I simply want to remove the machined edges up and down and all along the length of this. Now, um, if you've ever done any whittling or carving uh, on wood or whatever, um, it's a similar technique where you're just trying to kind of angle in and low and get little pieces off. Now you can see where I've taken this corner and exposed some of that plastic underneath it, and I'm gonna keep doing that. Um, and what you'll get is kind of this um, curved um, digging in along the, the corners all along it. And while that's, uh, what that does is it adds some organicness, and so sometimes you can go really uh, light. Now this is gonna be hard to see on the camera. Um, Sometimes you can go really light and go in, or shallow, I should say, and sometimes you can go in deeper and you'll get more out of it. And variation on that is really important. As I cut around, I might cut, you know, for longer pieces or some shorter ones, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if I've got this numbering and stuff, you can scrape that off as well. Um, you can use a scraper um, or something like that. Um, but by the time you end up carving all of this up, most of that is not going to be visible. The other thing I would say is that this flat side that has that sort of stuff is going to tend to be the bottom side of your kind of um, where you use it because you're going to want to have this side that's a little bit thinner um, up on the top because it's going to create more kind of, uh, um, how I put it, distance between this one and the next one. Now, I'm sorry this isn't very much in focus, but I hope you can start to see where um, you can start to see where that variation in depth starts affecting how that looks. And now, once you get all the corners up and down, you can start making some grooves even on the face of it. And, um, you know, that just starts kind of um, hacking into it. Now, what I find is that when I'm all done, when I've had this kind of, I'm not, I don't have a perfect cylinder when I'm done, but it does look much more like somebody took a tree um, and took a hatchet to it to get bark off of it, as you would. And that's the kind of look I'm going for, so that it's more rough hewn. Um, and uh, so let me cut through more, more of this, carve a few more pieces of this, and then I'll show you some more assembly. Now that we've uh, carved and hewn some of these sprues, giving them that hatcheted feel, um, I want to show you, and I should have shown you this at the beginning, out of the outset, some of the things that I've uh, used uh, to create these. The first of all, I wanted to show you, I had mentioned how um, some of these um, shapes, etc., like this, could be used to feel more like um, kind of some pine trees, etc. So that could be used as kind of a way to scatter, or you could use that uh, leaned up against a wall for a ladder or something to that effect. Um, and so, you know, kind of adds just some visual interest uh, and sense of of where where they're at in the world, kind of thing. So there's a couple of things like that. One of the first things I made uh, was just a quick little ladder, and as you can see, uh, you know, something like this, um, we can climb uh, up that etc put that where you want and make that um, now in Warcry you can climb up uh, vertical surfaces no matter what but if you wanted to you know again use just visual interest or 
uh, have this, you know, have an outcropping and have this there so you can climb up at other parts of a, of a walkway or platform. So this was the first thing I created. Um, next, I made kind of my long walkway. And uh, what's cool about this is that, I mean, obviously you could uh, span it across two sections of platforms, um, but you could also set it down. I created it with kind of legs, so it could be kind of like a dock or going over a marshland or something like that. So um, there's some options uh, that way. Um, I uh, created kind of what would be scaffolding um, just by creating some, some boxes and gluing them that way so that it's as if somebody was kind of working, using this to kind of build some more platforms for looking over walls and stationing um, kind of guards or something like that. I took a, one piece of the Azerite terrain and I embedded that in and I so I drew, drilled some holes in here and had those kind of sticking out, how those go out and then uh, platforms across here. Um, and I'm looking at doing another one up here so you could have another level like that. And then I've even used them in some of uh, these other pieces where I just kind of had a, a hewn stick sticking up like this, another one out like this, as if somebody's kind of just added it for maybe lookout or some blocking, or maybe they, they hung things over here to kind of create some more cover, etc. So um, there's a lot of ways to use them in your terrain to add visual interest to make it feel lived in, etc. Now, let's go ahead and look at how we're going to do that here. Um, and again, I'm not going to insult your intelligence. This is not rocket science, and you may have already figured this all out. Um, and uh, what you're going to do is you're going to find... Um, Oh, there's one other thing that I've tried to duplicate and haven't quite gotten there yet, and that is the walkable ladders. Now, um, uh, where I've been able to get to it so far is, again, uh, kind of you space them about half an inch apart going down um, and wider across for your longer bases. And when you have your models, the reason you want maybe a stairway instead of a ladder is that you can uh, park your model partway up when you're doing measurement, whereas a ladder, if you end your activation um, part way up, you come back down. So being able to kind of have this walkway and uh, you can kind of see here, you know, spacing them about half an inch apart and giving them enough of an angle when you uh, hang on the side. Now, visually, this is not as interesting uh, as I would like. And, you know, um, this is a little bit more interesting because everything's spaced so close together and you can get that rickety feel to it or that haphazard feel. Uh, this kind of uh, is a little bit of like this hewn stuff, but then more perfect spacing kind of throws off the aesthetic a little bit. So we'll see uh, if, if I can advance this design at all. But back to what we're doing. We're simply going to take um, our two longest pieces in this case, um, and we are going to, I'm actually, for these ones, I'm going to put their bottom side up because that is there's a little more space there to glue onto. I'm gonna um, use the um, markings on my mat to determine how far apart they are. Um, and so I could go um, if the the skinnier I go, the kind of more stable this is going to be, um, or not more stable, but the the when I cut my other sprues, I don't have to cut as much of them, and I can get more out of them. So it's a little more. Uh, so it's a little bit more um, efficient to do a thinner kind of walkway. Um, if I go wider, it's going to be a little bit more stable for my mini miniatures, especially the ogres, the stormcast, etc., to have a bit longer of a stance. Now, the first thing I would I'd like to do is kind of set my end pieces, and what that's going to do is allow me to, um, I guess, just create steadiness in how I'm working, um, so that moving forward now realistically it doesn't matter if it's perfectly square along all the way across if you wanted to create something that was narrower at one end and wider at another end you could definitely do that again adding to kind of that sense of haphazardness um, and what i'm going to do is i'm simply going to find my spot that i'm going to And they don't have to be perfectly even either. And for these first ones, I'm just going to go ahead and lay down this sprue piece, however much I want them to overhang. But I'm not going to worry about cutting it yet because it takes—it doesn't take too long for these to set. 
and I've got all this rest of the sprue and I don't, again, I'm setting kind of my first pieces. I don't need uh, to have all this other stuff available. I'm going to go ahead and now the reason I do, I, you can go all the way over and I may end up doing that. Uh, what was, uh, as you can see with these, I kind of made them offset because again, you're not going to have two perfectly equal um, lengths of trees in the, in the wild maybe, or, you know, your resources are limited. Um, but the, I did when doing this part, I did give myself quite a bit of overhang here and here so that when I'm coming onto a ledge, I have some lip to kind of lock it in a little bit. So um, you might want to give yourself some space like that. Um, but as I was putting those on, I'm going to take my, another piece of sprue and I'm going to lay that across. Now, when, uh, glue is, re when this, when the glue is reacting with the plastic, um, it starts to melt it, et cetera. And as it's kind of going through the process of drying, I like to give it some extra kind of push and kind of just let those, let them ooze together a little bit and force that soft, once it's soft, force them together. Um, now, once they are, up, once they've kind of spent enough time, I can cut that. I can finish, let it finish setting, etc. And I, I have a better idea of my kind of sprue usage. If I kind of cut a bunch of these ahead of time, and then um, try and lay them down. I'm going to get some that aren't going to quite fit. The other thing is I'm going to stagger these where I'm going to start laying some different angles. And I might even be able to take one that has, you know, like this branching in it and, uh, you know, um, make that step on top of another one. Or, um, you know, I might uh, be able to angle that like that. Um, and so I maybe not want this piece. So it, it allows me to kind of decide how I want to build it before I actually commit to cutting them off, etc. So uh, it's not so important how you paint them. What I've chosen to do is uh, paint them light as a base coat and then dry brush them with a dark coat as if it's the kind of the leftover bark, the stuff that a, a rough hatchet isn't going to be able to take off. And for me, that fit really well. Now, you could age this a bit more and make that a light gray undertone and make it as if that, that uh, kind of um, yellow wood under t underbelly has kind of been out in the in the air longer, um, etc. Um, or you could moss it up and make it look like stuff's grown on them. There's a lot of different ways, obviously, to paint uh, wood. Um, I haven't spent as much time worrying about what it looks like on the underside, so there's another cheat for you. Um, but uh, there you go. Um, paint it how you want. Use it how you want. Construct it how you want. Use it to create your own kinds of terrain. You could build an entire kind of um, log uh, fork uh, with palisades and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, however you want, you could uh, carve these out to points to make it more like the, the war cry terrain and uh, go crazy. You have so much of uh, these sprues lying around and uh, just going to waste. Um, it doesn't take much time. And if you've got a little bit of time watching TV or whatever, now it does make a little bit of a mess. So carve it into a garbage bag or something like that. But um, there's, uh, you, these are not recyclable, um, which is something we'd love if, if Games Workshop were able to find a, a recyclable plastic material that could do that. Um, uh, but in the meantime, cut these, create these, use them for walkways, for sprues, for spears, for anything you want, um, in the mortal realms. And I hope this was helpful. Thanks.